<laughs> Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe it was going to happen a, a couple days ago. And I find that a lot of times I want to wait until I have it all done. And there's just no end to this. And um, and I've got myself now into sort of like when I started on the All Nuts and there was actually 11 kids and you know, that's a lot. And and I'm still kind of, I've done priors and I've done some chases and I've did some other surnames, but, you know, once, once you kind of get to digging around in there and, um, and actually, you know, the, the, some of the things that I was able to find out about each one of the all nuts and then carry that forward. But I had announced in my last video that I was, I was going to, <laughs> I was going to switch it up a little bit and I was going to look into the O'Malley's. Now, if you remember the, uh, so, so my grandfather was Roy and he was the youngest of the 11 kids of All Nuts. And so he had a sister, uh, uh, Lillian and Lillian died when she was 29. And so I actually, and I think I did two videos on um, her daughter and what she had to go through as far as the the struggle of, of her mom dying young and then, and even her dad sort of died young. And so, um, so this is one of her children. And, um, and so I did a lot on Eva and uh, Genevieve is the, the youngest of the three kids. So, so I started out, um, you know, with Gwen Guinevere, because her name, you know, because of who her mother married, Craddock, was a Craddock. But then the next step was um, the marriage to an O'Malley. And I don't know, in my mind, <laughs> I think, I think that, you know, uh, I knew a girl that, I worked with that was her parents and her grandparents basically went between Ireland and back and forth, back and forth all the time into Portland, Oregon. And so I was around them and, and it was intriguing to me, but I don't know that the, I think I have enough Irish in me that, you know, in Scottish that I get real, real excited when I start seeing some of these surnames that, you know, I've always been kind of a McDonald, you know, as far as, um, that goes, but so, so one of the things that I I kind of wanted to to really review a little bit, just a synopsis of where this has been kind of going, and some of the summaries that I feel personally, and and this is, you know, I I'm doing my all of my genealogy on ancestry right now, and you know I have spent a great deal of many 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 years doing all of the research of all these people, but I never had the the information about the people that what they kind of you know so and and some of you have probably heard me talk about this but i know that there's new people um coming on all the time and and so i i kind of want to explain that's why i decided to do this the storytelling and and i take those facts and then i start filling in and see see kind of the patterns so in my collection of doing all this genealogy there has always been a lot of farmers and I always felt like that was kind of you know a big part of um, my involvement with my ancestors were always you know when I would travel to the different places I'd be out in farmland and and um, small areas and little schools and, and little churches and you know real community farmers and then when I actually started working on the all nuts, um, the younger all nuts, now there's the older, you know, when you have 11 kids, so there's the older all nuts, and then there was the younger ones. And some of the younger ones, they decided that they were going to go out west. And and part of it was looking for jobs, and, and a lot of them were able to get jobs, and they went to work for the mills, or they worked in the lumber camps. Now, if you think about it, you know, the danger zone, if you're a farmer, I mean, there's still things that can happen to you because of being a farmer, but it intensified when they actually started going into the mills. And so there was a number of, you know, including my grandfather who had major, major industrial accidents in mills and were really affected by that. So 
I, I, you know, I've been going along, going along, and I hit this Craddock and O'Malley here down in in Denver, and I'm going through, and it's and it's like th these people were, you know, they weren't um, like the president of the bank or you know at that level of jobs, but they all had, you know, they were truck drivers delivering dairy or, you know, they all had um, pretty n normal. I mean, I could go through, you know, and you. You know, <laughs> I always uh, check it off the list, and um, and there wasn't much happening, and until all of a sudden, in this probably last week, and then the you know working on a more and an aha, big aha, just right before I started the video. So these people seem to be um, more military minded, and I haven't put all the dates together, but however, I just keep running into. Um, you know, Bates, remember back in the Bates when, um, you know, he was in the Civil War in that video that covered that. So I ended up with a Craddock that was, a, and his name was George Washington Craddock. And he was in the Civil War and he was 28 years old and he had a baby. And he, he went, he went to, you know, and from what I can tell the medic or the military records, and my brother's been helping me because he's really, you know, he comes from the background of, of the military as far as, you know, he was in Vietnam. My grandfather was in um, World War II, and then the next one was in World War I. And, they, and my brother still has the uniforms. And so there's a place in Ancestry that you can go in and look at military records. But as far as I could see, it looked very close to the fact that he wasn't very long there, and he was killed, and he, he died, which was... <laughs> you know, not it, it like it, it kind of bothered me, you know, I mean, it was like young and in a family in a background and then to go in and fight and be killed that soon after you got there. So and I hadn't run into that. But as I started working more and more between the O'Malley's and the Craddock's that I started seeing, uh, you know, there was um, Andrew. George Shell, I spelled S C H E L L, Shell maybe, um, and he was married to Guinevere's daughter, and he was in the Marines, and um, and what started showing up to me a lot was a lot of these people were buried at the Fort Logan National Cemetery in Denver, which that you know right now I'm in Denver for couple more months and then I'm moving back to Albuquerque, which is a whole nother <laughs> area to <laughs> do some of the uh, rock collecting and some of the stuff I like, but I'll still do, be doing genealogy and, and videos because um, it's just, this is what I love you know, to do. Um, but I, but that's kind of what it's when I started noticing. So there was like, there's these two cemeteries and I've been to, actually I've been to, a, I've been to two cemeteries looking for these people. But as it ended up, I didn't go to this Fort Logan, this National Cemetery. But immediately, I started seeing these people that were in the different wars now, um, and being then, you know, put into. And I've even seen some women. And I, I think my sister's married to a career Air Force guy, and I think that, you know, she'll be buried with him in a national um, cemetery up in Washington. But I don't know how that works as far as, you know, it looks like if you see it in the national cemeteries where they just have headstone head and they all look the same. And they're all um, so I was surprised to see a, a couple of the women so far were buried up there, too. So, you know, and sometimes I bring this stuff up because it, it's some, some more stuff that I want to research and go deeper in. And I love when you send comments and say, oh, you know. I would really like to know a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that because to me, it's just a whole educational for me. I do a lot of research and so I'm learning, I'm learning a lot of different aspects of uh, what goes on around just the names and the dates and the census reports and, and uh, um, that part of it. So, so there was him, you know, that was Andrew George and he was the Marine. And then there was, um, of Robert H. Hansen. <laughs> okay, so as I recall, <laughs> when I was reading it a little bit ago, Robert H. Hansen 
Um, he was born in 1917, and he died in California, and he was married to Geneva's, uh, you know, through that line, and and so her name was Doris May Hansen. And I think it was his military draft records when they signed him up. And and I'm going to have to do more research on that because I know how how all of that was handled, like with the Vietnam War, more than I know. You know, and then there was different wars where, you know, like Lorenzo Bates, I mean, he was he was an older man and they were still expected to go where he wanted to go. And um so, but I think I think I was reading his, and it said he was six feet tall, and weighed about one hundred and ten pounds. <laughs> and so, boy, I just had to go. I had to see if there was any pictures of him. And what's fascinating is there was some pictures of him, and there the tombstone, and there was information, but it was like he was very um, kind of olive skin. And dark hair, very big, huge smile. Looks like a really skinny guy, though. You know, with that <laughs> information that I had, I wanted to. I wanted to check on his dad, and so he, um, Robert definitely was in the military, also. But his dad's um, name was John Hansen Karsten, and then it says S two. And I think that was a sergeant's, yeah, or second class. So he was in World War II, and he was on the destroyer USS Mugford um, while on patrol near Lenga Point Guadalcanal in the uh, Solomon Islands. A Japanese aircraft dropped bombs onto their ship, and he was killed along with 21 of his mates, and they buried all of them at sea, which kind of <laughs> goes along with George Washington, like, you know, just, yeah. But that, that you know, and so then then I went ahead and I looked, and he was, he was actually, this guy was born in the Philippines, which then, you know, and there's not a picture of him. I think that there was some writing and somebody had put some stuff and I haven't, sometimes sometimes you can put stuff instead of a picture, you can put information, then you can blow it up and see what it says. I imagine it looks like it's a list probably of the 21 or 20 guys that, that were killed in that um, situation and that were buried at sea, which then, you know, you don't go to cemeteries, you know, and maybe that's something to look forward to, look into also is that, you know, do, maybe he has a, you know, he, he may be listed in the National Cemetery in some way as far as, you know, not, I mean, that happened in most, a lot of the wars that the, uh, I know there, when I was in Vietnam on a military historical tour group, it was fascinating to me because we went to visit this one big building and it was all wired it up, you know, with constant wire and there was sandbags and this wasn't that long ago. I mean, way after the, the war was over, but there's still Marines over there or any mil military guys were over there um, looking. They were trying to find, even if they had like a piece of bone that they could do a DNA sample on so that they, and, and, and when they found someone when we were there and they showed these pictures. And so they take that one little piece of bone and they put it in the full size coffin and they send it home to the family. And then the family can do that burial, even though that's all that's remaining. So that's something to so <laughs> look into because um, I'm fascinated to know how they, how they would have done it if they were buried at sea. There seemed like there'd be some acknowledgement someplace showing those those guys gave their life um, to the war. And and then there was, a, uh, he, he ended up, the John guy, this is all, this is, I mean, it's almost still warm. I, I went and made, made a copy <laughs> from the printer, you know, and it was like fresh off the, fresh off the press. But I was so intrigued when this all came up. And, and then he was married to a lady. Um, and they all, they ended up, well, no, I guess Hanson's, it shows him being, uh, you know, he's still, his death burial is still considered in the Philippines somehow. 
And um, she was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, but then ended up in San Mateo, California. So there's 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 going to be a lot of fun <laughs> taking him around in this particular area. But I think there's going to be so much. What what I get the feeling of is is sort of like way I was way I grew up. You know, my dad worked at the post office and and but he had been in uh, World War Two, and then his dad was in, and then his dad's dad was in, and then my brother followed suit. So I, I get the feeling that. You know, I, I mean, and I'll have to look and see exactly, match up the dates as far as when did the world wars and when when did it start? Because there's also been somebody that was working in the, um, I think it was just early in my, this morning, one of the, the Spanish-American war or something like that. And so I need to, to fit those dates in and see if that's, if that's why. But I get the feeling, I, I think just because of the way I was raised, um, kind of in a military family and um and then my sister married an air force um uh you know he retired from the air force and was there for his career so i i don't know i mean i just get the feeling that there's you know that there's going to be a lot of this and that's why i um i started wanting to do the research and and then at first i only saw it in, in the O'Malley's and then I started seeing it in the Craddocks and, and that it all meshes together in this, men, you know, almost a mentality that, that you're, you're, you know, and the Vietnam war was, you know, such a different war as far as, you know, the draft dodgers and the, the not believing in the war. And um, I think where world war two, was so so detrimental to our health and well-being as a country and and the men and the women you know really really took part in it um and and i don't know what the reaction would be really you know i don't know any personally anybody well a few people semi <laughs> that were in afghanistan that have issues and and i i did a lot of work with the va hospital and um, getting those guys, the Vietnam guys and the, Af um, the, the more recent uh, Iraq and Afghanistan guys. And um, so the VA hospital was in in the campus area of the university hospital that I worked. And I worked for the doctors collecting the money mainly. And so they would, there was a bridge between the buildings. And so you could watch the stream of uh, wheelchairs going across the bridge over to use our facility at the university. And a lot of it was radiation and, and um, chemotherapy and you know a lot of cancer. And so in, in my job was trying to get it paid. And so you know they they would never get necessarily the right paperwork, you know, authorization that they were really sending them over there. And they hadn't, the VA hadn't been paying for them. They had just been denied, denied, denied. And I actually went up in some of those departments and sat and watched the veterans come through in this, you know, parade of, of wheelchairs and go and watch them when they were being admitted into the hospital area. And they weren't asked to see any paperwork. They weren't questioned about an authorization. They were, you know, which they should have. And so it was like changing the whole process. But it gave me this whole other look, you know, about the veterans hospital and what they um, provide, you know, for these people who are um, in one way or another. I mean, sometimes it's mental as much as physical. I mean, some some of it's physical and, and is noticeable, but I know that there's a lot of people that have really suffered um, mental issues from, from being, you know, veterans and being in the war. So I, I definitely, I think that's going to be the the main theme of some of my research right now is to to kind of see sort of like when I did and they gave you the list of um you know uh, I'm still working on trying to figure out how to to be able to pull the information up on my monitor so you can actually see like when I do an excel sheet and and um and you see what the other one I did was all the people and how they died young and and the, so there's that theme of it. But now I now I'm curious to know how many of these people are really military 
um, you know, and I'd like to go to that before I leave uh, to that national cemetery and 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 see. You know, it looks it looks humongous, and it's it looks kind of like when you go. Um, I know there's a big one right out of Santa Fe, New Mexico, where my mother-in-law um, is buried, and um, you know, it looks very much like Arlington Cemetery, and and it very patriotic, everything about it, and she was one of the first um, women to go into the Navy and had degrees. And so she was an officer when she went in and, um, that was world war two. And that's where she met her husband and, you know, my grand, the grandfather of my sons. Um, and, but they were both in the Navy. And so, so, you know, it's just, it's just interesting. And sometimes it, it, I just hadn't been, you know, other than, Lorenzo, I don't really remember seeing too many uh, of the farmers having to be involved in even the Civil War. And um, I think that I know enough about some of it, you know, just from my studies in history. And, you know, there's different kinds of history. And a lot of the history that I took in college was social history was but which was more like this movement thing what why did why did they move why did they immigrate why did they end up here there and so that part but um i think the the military aspect and i know i was i belong to a um club um when i lived here in denver before and it was up in boulder and i would go to i belonged you know there were society um and there was one younger guy, and I'd always hear hear these conversations as we're sitting around the table, and that he would go to these different military units around the United States, and the older people who couldn't travel and didn't have the capacity to be able to necessarily find the information that they were interested in their genealogy, he would actually, um, they would pay him to do that. So I know that that's a whole whole area you know of people's interest and it's you know as long as i've been on ancestry this is kind of the first that i've actually started to use um their information and i was a little bit ago i talked to my brother i had to tell him about <laughs> finding the people from the philippines and um you know this this military connection and and he did tell me that you have to be careful about sometimes the dates it's something about the re the the registration date may not be exactly what happened when the person got there or when they got killed. And so I've got to learn more about that too. <laughs> I think it's what, this just works for me. It just, it just works for me because I, I've always wanted to know more. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, and when, when my boys, when I first started using the computer and I'd ask them a question and they say, well, I'm just Google it. <laughs> Just Google it, Mom. <laughs> and so I don't even bring up something until I've already Googled it and found I still have a question, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> yeah, my sons are very techy guys, and um, they're, they're molding me. <laughs> they're making me more and more interested in um, every, all the changes that are going on right now. And the other thing I do, I, I listen to, um, you know, I, I have uh, subscribed to a, a, a young lawyer who is covering all the changes that are happening in relationship to social media. And so me having a website for my jewelry and having the genealogy um, channel now, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, and, and, then, and then sometimes when I'm digging through some of the records, I'll see something. I'll, just the other day I was looking and it was a marriage certificate that I was looking at. But off to the side of the newspaper, <laughs> there was writing. And so I kind of, you know, moved it over so I could read it. And and if you wouldn't have known the date, it it could have been now about crime and um, killings. And, you know, it, so it, the transition is <laughs> we're not done, <laughs> you know. It, and, and in some ways, a lot of people think it's much worse, but in many ways, I don't know that they've looked at it and did an analysis really to be able to to have any idea. Um, I think right now the sensational part of it, you know, it it it's right there in your face. <laughs> you know, it's like, and especially if you do any any social media at all, 
um, stuff that you would have never, ever, ever been come in contact with. Or like my mom and dad getting the local newspaper in my hometown and they would read that and that was it, you know. And and actually the town paper for many, many years, the front page might have something about what's going on in the rest of the world or in the rest of the United States. But a lot of people read it because of the ads and the you know, where they could get a discount on food. And a lot of them, um, you know, <laughs> they lived to see the local news in brief. So what was happening right there in their community and who got married and who got divorced and who, who you know, when was the funeral? And it was, you know, so so if you, if you take that, you know, and that's where my mom was before she died. She was kind of in that area where it was making a difference because they were somebody from outside of the little town bought the newspaper. And so they were filling it more with this, this sensationalism and stuff. And of course she would watch the weather station and, and, you know, and I'd always tease her. It's like, well, mom, you know, I think that was last year that that storm hit, but now, now because there's so much going on and they're bringing it to us and they're telling us what's going on in all these other countries. Um, and I try to do what I can actually affect you know, I, I think that it's kind of how I live my life. I don't necessarily, um, you know, I, I have a very open mind and I and I try to be um, kind of weigh it out and um, with all these changes. And, and sometimes, you know, yesterday I spent several hours on the telephone with trying to get some lab work situated around and... Um, and it was a big hospital, but it was, but it was still interesting to me because it's still, you, you know, it, it it's that information that people need to know, you know, what you do next and where you go next and how it all connects. And, um, and, and it's hard for them right now because I think they're, you know, hiring new people and, and they're not as up on some of the information just be, you know, and a lot of us that, the pandemic. I mean, and now there's the, <laughs> I just heard about the variant when I went to get my regular flu shot. Sometimes I feel like a pin cushion, but um, uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to uh, let you know, and I, you know, sometimes I do things and my kids, you know, <laughs> my, my kids are like in their fifties. <laughs> and <laughs> so, and I didn't ask him if this was going to cause any problems, but so in this thing, and we've talked about it before, but as far as you subscribing to my channel, um, it was a channel name. So my channel name in the beginning was Genealogy Marsha McDonald. And I felt like Marsha McDonald and the surname McDonald would maybe, you know, only McDonald's would really sort of relate to it. And so, so I actually changed it. So right now it's Genealogy Storyteller. And there, and it's capital G, and it's a capital S before stories, and a capital T before teller. And um, and then all of a sudden, my numbers dropped. And now the numbers is this some, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm still trying to learn about it. It's it's called algorithms and 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 that's social media type stuff. But but the more people you have that are subscribing, then they pay you to continue making them because it says, oh these people really want to see this. And then, and then part of it is an advertisement, but it doesn't cost anybody anything, anything to be subscribed. But in talking to my brother just a little bit ago, he hasn't been getting notified since I changed it. Now he was subscribed to me and that was the benefit for people to subscribe to a channel is then you would be notified as when the next one's released. So he was about two or three behind because he hadn't received the notification because I changed the name. And I don't know how long that's going to take, but I know that I know I checked when I go into YouTube and I put, I pulled up um, genealogy, Marsha McDonald. And eventually I saw all of my, my videos are there. And I think I've got about 22 now and I had counted up the different surnames and I don't, I didn't bring it to <laughs> my computer. It's sitting over a table over there other paperwork but I, I wanted to break it down for you to so you would know if you're more interested in the chase family or more interested in the bates family or you know you could you could you know i always try to put who the surname is unless it's something generic that i'm talking about but most of the time i want to 
uh, put that surname. So those people, you know, I hope that this is helping them someplace in their research. And I and I would love to hear more from the DNA matches as well as um, my other people. Um, uh, yeah, and the the subscribing, I didn't know what it was for a long time, and and I don't like to have to harp about it, but but it does make a difference in how how many people are subscribed, then then they will um, actually um, know that there's people of interest, and I and I've looked at you know some of the. And, and and as far as algorithms go, I think I know more than I, and I don't think I want to know anymore about it. I think I'd rather do the mystery and the challenge and enjoy the genealogy more than all that behind the scenes. But but I know that the other one that I watched, the young lawyer, you know, every time he just ends it by saying, you know, don't forget to like it. Like it is important. You know, likes count. It means, that, and, and I get reports back that say, oh, people who are, you know, subscribe to your account they're really reading the material all the way through and which is you know so that's good to know and then the subscribing now memberships are something else and there's some money involved i think and i'm, I'm not a member with anybody on but subscribing is something that i i like to i'm subscribing to other genealogy people also so i can be notified when they put out um information and there's um, one of the ladies, and she calls herself the barefoot genealogist, and um, very easy to remember. And I've seen her, you know, on the screen, and and I've, you know, watched three and four day uh, events when she's there, and she doesn't wear shoes, <laughs> and and so I subscribe to her so that every time she publishes a new one, it comes up to you know when I sign on to YouTube, then it, she's right there. And so there's that convenience and, and I like that. And I've been doing that more often myself. Um, so on that note, <laughs> I'm going to say it. Okay. Like it and subscribe and, you know, leave me comments. I love when I get the comments and, um, <laughs> you know, it, and it, I may, I, you know, I want, I want to know other people's stories also, you know, I think that, that we all have, have stories and they can all be followed along. And I think it helps people understand that, you know, it's a remembrance type thing too. It gives credit to the people that worked hard or were in wars or um, loved us, you know? Yeah. I think it really is really kind of a, a gift to be able to, to get the stories out there. And I will give, you know, you can watch my videos and, and see how I do my storytelling. And I think that, um, you know, I think there's even some genealogy uh, courses now kind of online on storytelling, but I just, I do it my way. <laughs> so anyway, um, on that note, I'm going to go eat some lunch and I hope you have a wonderful day. Or as the hospital told me yesterday, have a better day after this. Bye. <laughs>